I think in today's world, motherhood is seen as something that takes away your freedom. As a woman, it is asking you to put away a lot of your personal um, interests or dreams or desires. But really, motherhood frees you. It brings out who you are as a woman. Motherhood is the greatest gift God has given a woman and to have these children that God has blessed us with and bring them forth has um, definitely brought the beauty that I have within me outside. So I, I truly enjoy every bit of it. It's hard, it's difficult. It brings all your vulnerability outside, but um, it has also brought so much freedom in really knowing who I am as a woman, as a person, and to know God's love for me. It's fun, it's exciting. It's not what I expected. I always thought that it would probably be easier and maybe that was just me being naive, but it's definitely a lot more work than I thought it would be. The work itself is helping me to become a better person, helping me to become a better man, and really it helps me to give of myself, which I think is really one of the best things that has happened as a result of having children. I'm able more and more to give of myself in ways that I never thought that I could specifically so that my children can be okay and survive and do well and flourish. For us, we haven't really experienced um, anything very negative, um, especially as we go outside or grocery shopping or being out in the park. Um, we have really received um, a lot of good positive uh, thoughts and um, how people are just happy to see a lot of comments about what a beautiful family um, so really not uh, much um, you know negative feedback typically people react oh you have five kids a few times people have been negative about it I remember there was one time we walked to the store we were walking through the store and buying stuff and the lady at the checkout was looking at, oh wow, you have a lot of kids. Uh, you're done, right? Yeah, you, you're, you're done. You should be done. And she kept saying this over and over again. That was just the only negative reaction. My friends at school or my fellow teachers at school, they, they, they have fun with it. Everyone who's ever met the kids have had a joyful encounter with them. From a very early age, I knew that I was called to marriage. Growing up, I had been very involved in our church, and many people had suggested that I look into priesthood. Marriage is something, as growing up in my family, in just the way I was raised as a Catholic, I've been able to experience the beauty of married life, seeing my parents and my, fa my own family. I think very, very clearly it was given to me that, no, you're meant for marriage. And so that's how I pursued marriage and that's how I am where I am today. When it came to um, choosing a partner, a husband, I always gave importance to a person who loved God. Um, so that has been a priority, even though there were all these other lists of things that I had. Um, but someone, um, you know, who was God-fearing. So finding uh, Sony as my husband, I saw those qualities in him. He was also very actively involved in church, gave God, you know, number one priority in his life. And I knew that would help me in my marriage, especially to continue these ministries, you know, as a married couple, I knew that would be helpful. Alfie is very loving. Loving in the sense that I make a lot of mistakes. And if she wanted to, she could hold those mistakes against me for the rest of my life. Despite that, she does, she doesn't. Because of that love that she has, she will be the first one to give of herself as much as she can for me, for all of us, all of the kids, everyone here in the family. Sony is a very soft-spoken person. He 
is very patient and he doesn't complain much. I'm the total opposite. So God definitely knows when he brings two people together, right? You need um, someone who is complimentary to you. So I am the very talkative, loud person and he is someone who listens, who pays attention to the details. Loving nature is second to none. And, and I think that's so beautiful in, in her in her vocation as, as a married, married person and even just as a person in general. The, the way that she is able to love others, I think is just absolutely amazing. Beyond everything, someone who doesn't complain, like having five children and a wife who stays at home <laughs> taking care of kids, you know, continuously, there's so much to share and I get upset with. And in all those moments, just to be quiet and to be gentle and to be patient, and not share too much of his side, rather hear me out. That's just awesome. I know he has a lot of things going on too, but to be able to just give me the time and to understand me, um, that's been very, very helpful. I'm from a family of four. I have three sisters, two older, one younger. Alfie's from a family of five. I never thought that my family was big, so, Having four or five kids seemed normal and natural. I remember making jokes with my family, and my family still holds me to it, that, oh, I said I would have eight kids and things like that. When we were um, planning to get married, um, I think it was so natural to both of us that we knew that this is something. We are going to be pro-life. We are going to receive children that God sends us. So there wasn't really like a set planning, oh, this is how many, or we are going to be, um, you know, having uh, many children or anything like that, but it was just understood um, in, in our process of uh, deciding to be married. And I think once we got married, we just never had a second thought, like if God gives, we are going to be open. As we started having kids, of course, you know, they start coming out and then you realize how much work it is and how much how much stuff is has how many things you have to juggle at the same time so in that sense it helped us to plan a little bit more as to how many kids we're having and how far apart they're going to be but we never really set a number It was difficult after the first baby came. I remember it was just a sleepless nights and just trying to find that balance between both of us, how to share that. That was, you know, that was very challenging. We were just also learning um, how to take care of a baby at the same time, how to share that responsibility with each other. So it was hard. It wasn't perfect. We struggled a lot. Um, so it, it took us some time to just you know, get used to having a first baby. And then the second baby came and, <laughs> you know, it wasn't any better. It was just now learning how to handle two. And the same with third, fourth, fifth. We had a miscarriage in between two, a baby that we lost. So there, you know, it, it was a struggling time um, learning to learning to accept each baby and their um, personalities, their the differences in them while managing our own differences. But through all of it, I, I think, when we trusted in God, when we sat together in family prayer um, before Our Lady offering the rosary, there was strength that was coming. You know, without that, there's no way we can continue. It was definitely a sacrifice. It was not one thing that I was used to. I, I always joke and say that when I got married, I always wanted to sit down with Alfie, go downstairs and watch you know, Chicago Bulls games or Chicago Bears games, and we would just sit there and cheer on the teams. That doesn't happen. I have five kids. And so there are definitely a lot of sacrifices that I have to take, whether it be hanging out with friends, whether it be going out after work with my co-teachers, whether it be doing something that I want to do. I want to go downstairs and watch a movie by myself. That typically doesn't happen. It was a sacrifice. It was hard to do initially because it was, and by initially I mean in the first years of marriage, it was hard to do initially because I wasn't used to it. But now it's, it's gotten to the point where I, I can do it and it's not as painful as it was in the past. At the same time also I can realize why I'm doing it. 
it's for the betterment of my kids now and my family. At the same time, there are some times where I fight and I want to hold on to it as much as I can, and I say no, I want to do this, but and sometimes I I'll still get that opportunity to do those things. But for the most part, giving up those things and, and making that sacrifice was hard. But I've started to grow into that, and I think the reason for that is the perspective that I have: that it's not about me anymore. And family life has really taught me that it's not about me. It's not about how I feel. It's not about as much as I struggle with. It. It's not about how much I sleep or how much rest I get or whatever. It's about. Is everything else here taken care of, and is everyone taken care of? Our focus that we had with each other that kind of went away.、Um, our selfishness of how to take care of ourselves when the babies came, that focus, you know, from just being with each other went into. The children and how we can sacrifice ourselves for them, and that was such a great、um, blessing in itself to know that there's so much more within us that we can give, rather than just being self-centered and just thinking about ourselves and how we can have fun or how we can、um, take care of ourselves. But it was more like, how can we give? How can we help them? And through that, we learn to love each other, and that I think really helped us to grow much deeper in our, you know, marriage. The me time that I require is just some downtime. For me, if I can sleep, that's good for me. My me time is really spent, I guess, more with with Alfie,、uh, where we can put the kids down, we can go downstairs and watch a movie, we can just relax and unwind, maybe even just sit and talk. That's really the me time that I need. So a lot of times、um, when we struggle with just children, no rest, and also being involved with other, you know, ministries that we are part of, also, you know, our extended family, our parents, we both have elderly parents, so you know, all it, it, there's sometimes a lot going on, and. How do we find time to pray or to come together as a family? Sometimes we struggle with all of that because some, you know, to wake up in the morning and to pray when you have no sleep in the night, you know, it's hard. And sometimes you're running on no prayer because you just woke up and woke up with the baby crying, or you know, someone is is hungry and they need food. And sometimes I just don't even have time to prepare a full meal. It's very、um, difficult, and sometimes I don't have time to share things with my husband when there is so much going on because kids are in between, or you know, we have something else going on, or we have people coming over to the house and we have to make dinner. So sometimes it gets very chaotic. Each person in the family requires something special, requires special attention. That's been the hard part for me to have. The hardest thing to to have to deal with because I feel myself being pulled in six different directions, whether it be from my kids, whether it be from you know my wife, and then that's not even mentioning anything else that's going on outside, whether it be work or church or ministry or all these other things. That's the biggest struggle that I face, trying to give each kid, each person in the family, their special time, their. Special attention, the needed attention that they need. In that, I think the Lord is showing me that there are going to be instances that you're that I'm not going to be able to fulfill. That I am not the end all, be all for my kids. As much as I want to be, and as much as I try to be, for Alfie or the kids, I can't do that. I'm incapable of being able to do all of that. And so everything else, I really have to give to God.、Uh, there, are, and I have to trust that the Lord is going to take care of. Everyone. So, in my prayers, going to school, in my prayers, in between here and there at home, it's at, when I go to church.
George is our firstborn. He is 11 years old. He is the life of the party. He He's a social butterfly. He loves to be the center of attention. He, um, he loves having people over. He wants to be always doing something. He is always ready. Um, he always wants to be on the go. Brings so much laughter and light into the family. Um, at the same time, he, he's someone who, who always questions. He's also a drummer. He was a natural drummer from a very young age, around nine, ten months. Any, any of those instruments he could, um, he could easily, very musically talented in that way. And recently we were seeing him even playing the piano and without knowing anything about it, he can just make music and, and that's something new that we are, you know, finding out about him. It's really interesting. Second child is Anna. Anna is nine years old. She is our first daughter, and with that, she is very, very caring. She is one, and she's very trustworthy. She's very responsible. She takes care of all the things that she that is given to her very well and she is very loving towards us and to her siblings as well. She's currently learning how to play the piano and she's also building up, she's growing in her musical skills as well. She's singing in the choir as well. Our third child is Mary and she just turned six years old. She is the most strong-willed child that we have and she taught us so much as parents after we thought we knew something being the parents of two kids but with the third one coming it just totally changed us and taught us patience, taught us how to explain things better to her and it's it's, it's fun just dealing with her. She's also the person who is very much attracted to saint stories. She's the one who would say, oh, mama, it's okay to die. I'll be in heaven with Jesus, right? I'll get to see Jesus soon. Um, she's also the one who would first say, I'm not gonna clean up, I'm not gonna do it. But then five minutes later, she will go and do it. And mama, I did it, like Saint Therese. Or, you know, she'll, she'll point out a saint's name. Our fourth child is Elizabeth. She just turned three years old. She is one of the sweetest kids that we have. She shows her love to us through her hugs, through her caring, through the way that she talks. She doesn't fully talk yet, but in the few words that she does know and with the other sounds that she makes, she is able to verbalize how much she loves us and how much she loves everybody. She has the utmost respect for her older siblings and she trusts them to a fall. And it, it's really beautiful to see how, how amazing she is. Joseph is our youngest and the fifth one, he just turned one. To say something beautiful about him, after having three daughters, uh, my son, he has been praying and wanting to have a brother for a very long time. Right after I conceived him and we knew the baby was coming, Pope Francis announced that year as the year of St. Joseph. So even that was like a sign to me that, hmm, maybe this is a boy because we were going to name this baby if it's a boy, Joseph. So it really shows us the providence that, you know, God brought us a Joseph in the year of Joseph. Homeschooling is like a vocation, you know, just like not everybody is called to priesthood or religious life or married life. Only some are called. The same way not everyone is called to homeschooling. You know, some are. And if you are sending your kids to other school, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you are doing the right thing for your family. 
But with everything that's going on in the world and to protect our children in, in with their values especially, parents have to be knowledgeable, you know. A lot of times our ignorance can cause us to think that, oh, it's okay, um, you know, going for a birthday party or watching this movie is fine, let the kids watch. Sometimes we, we look into the movie that they're going to watch and we read it and we see if, you know, giving a good message or if there are some things that they don't need to be exposed to or they don't need to uh, see at that age when they're not developmentally there yet to understand what is that or what is right and wrong. Um, or even with phones and you know use, using computer, um, we, we they're not at an age where we can explain all the dangers that are there. So if you don't know about the dangers or if you take it very lightly, oh, every you know it's okay. We can't we can't micromanage everything. Sometimes parents can fall into that um, because it's hard. Um, so being aware of it, that there is danger. We, we are the primary educators of our children and we have to protect them. If we don't, no other teachers are going to do that for you, you know? So whether you homeschool or send them to Catholic school or public school, I think having conversations with your kids slowly as age appropriately, helping them understand what is right and what is wrong, why we do things the way we do it, rather than just telling them, do it, you know, this is what it is, but explaining it to them, why we do it. And I think that really helps them, whether they understand it or not, as they grow older, and which with each year, we explaining it differently, um, it will slowly instill those values in them. Growing up, um, I have seen my parents go to daily mass. It, it was a continuous thing, if, even if we go on vacation, um, whatever other things happen, they will make sure that they'll find a place where there is evening mass or morning mass. And so it continued throughout my life. And as George came, my oldest, and the second one, and the third one, I somehow continued that because I knew whenever I missed mass, there was something that I was lacking that day within me. So growing up, I was an altar server. In my walk of faith, I will say that, that was one of the greatest joys of my life. That really solidified my foundation in the faith, if you will, and my foundation in the sacraments. One of the good things about um, sharing saints' stories with them is that they get really inspired of how they were making sacrifices or taking up small sufferings to uh, pray for souls in purgatory or you know for this conversion of souls so for children it's it's very hard you know to just going to church they're not going to just really learn something about a saint um, and even if we were to read it out to them the story they hear it but i try to do is i make it a little bit more interesting for them by maybe making a special snack that day or making something that's connected to the saint. So if it's an Italian saint, you know, for example, you make uh, pasta or spaghetti or meatball, something like that. We kind of celebrate our kids' patron saints. Um, so whenever that saint's feast is, for example, um, my first son is named after St. George. So when the feast day comes, it's a, it, for him it's a big celebration because it's this person's feast day and we are celebrating because of the life that they led, you know, the example they showed or their martyrdom that they, you know, they went through to, to give us this example of their life. Our call really was to help other people come to know Jesus specifically young people, to come to know Jesus. That is at the forefront of everything that we do as a family. Our focus obviously is our family, but then of course our other mission in life as every Christian is to share God's love with the world. Being part of the community in church, um, helping there. And by giving that the priority over those other things as definitely helped us to um, experience Christ in a very different way that we wouldn't have experienced if we had done things differently. You are kind of sacrificing a lot of other things that you would love to do, like we would love to be. But when we are able to sacrifice that, we see how the Lord is pouring out graces after graces. And we are champions!
Are you searching for fulfillment? <laughs> Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World.